I was born in Scotland on the Isle of Skye. I was educated largely in Birmingham until I went to Edinburgh University. I got a PhD in theology in 1933. <coughs> I became a minister. Uh, I was actually the national overseer for Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, many people would debate whether that is Christian or not. Uh, but I left that ministry in 1969, purely and simply because I felt that I could no longer continue to preach things that I didn't believe. I would love to tell you that I started straight away on a search for truth, but that would be a, a lie. I did everything that was bad. I went completely the wrong way. I gambled, I drank, I womanized. And so, in 1995, on October the 28th, praise be to Allah, I embraced Islam. I'd been considering Islam for some years beforehand, uh, and had already made one or two adjustments in my life, my eating habits, I was eating halal for ten years before I embraced Islam. Uh, I was choosing my friends more carefully, uh, and it was not until 18 months before I embraced Islam that I gave up drinking and at the same time gave up gambling. I, I'm a married man, uh, more than the law allows. I've been married seven times because I'm addicted to wedding cake. But I have from my seven wives, I have 31 children. I have 18 grandchildren and seven great-grandchildren. I've always heard of people. My wife and six children at home with me are Muslim. One son by previous marriage is Muslim. My mother, who died only six weeks ago, was the oldest Muslim in Europe. She would have been, had she remained alive three weeks later, she would have been 119 years old. Uh, she embraced Islam two years before she died and uh, was engaged in the work of Dawat until the way she, uh, day she died. Uh, I am very, very happy to be Muslim. I am very proud to be Muslim. And it has most definitely affected my life in many, many ways. Uh, I'm constantly being told that I don't look my age. Uh, 99 days out of 100, I don't fear my age. I sometimes kid, kid myself that I'm only 16 <laughs> and I want to join the children playing football on the park. But the overwhelming difference that Islam has made in my life is the peace that it's brought into my life. And it started the day that I embraced Islam. I had never before set foot inside a mosque. And I turned up at the masjid by arrangement with Haji who would made the arrangements at the masjid and I was the first to arrive. I buried Sarah Kamis from a friend uh, and felt uh, like a daffodil standing outside the mosque waiting for someone to come and open up. Uh, the next person to arrive was Haji himself who took me into the mosque, showed me how to make wuzu and then told me that he had to go into the office. I didn't realize until that point that he was a member of the mosque committee. He 
told me he, he had to go into the office to sort out some mosque business, but I could go into the prayer hall. So if anyone comes in, they won't ask any questions, just sit down. Any books that you see around, you're welcome to read any of them. Uh, so I opened the door to the prayer hall, and it was like a wave rushed over me, a wave of utter and complete peace. This could partly be explained by the fact that there was no one else there. But it was a sensation that I had never experienced before, nor since. But praise be to Allah, that peace has never completely left me. My Iman has been up and down in common with most of my Muslim brothers. But praise be to Allah, I'm still here, and I hope to continue until Judgment Day. To my Muslim brothers and sisters, the one thing that I would dearly like them all to do is to get their priorities right. We are far too often more concerned with the dunya than we are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is nothing at all wrong with liking nice things. There's nothing at all wrong with liking a Mercedes car. But when you see the price of a Mercedes car, means you have to work two jobs, work 16, 18 hours a day to accumulate the money to buy that car. What suffers? Your namaz. You can't read your namaz properly, you haven't got time, you're too tired to read the Quran, you're too tired to conduct a lean in your own home. So that Mercedes car, although there's nothing at all wrong with it, the Mercedes car becomes haram as far as you are concerned. It's taking the place of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to get our priorities right. We have to realize that this dunya has absolutely nothing to offer to any of us. And even though we may acquire great wealth in this dunya, we can't take it with us. The thing that we have to realize is that when you realize that something is right, now is the time to start doing something about it. You can't say, all right, as soon as I have finished paying for my motor car, or as soon as my mortgage is paid, I will start reading my namaz five times a day. Because we don't know about tomorrow. We don't know about five minutes from now. Every Muslim should live every day as if it were his last. Because one day he's going to be right.